team in second class, Pete Florence, Private J.L. Fairbanks, and all you other fans, hang on tight to your receivers. Here comes your favorite lecturer on, on current events with the report of Modern Living and Housing. It's none other than Jack Haley. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to be sure that you're all in a friendly mood tonight. So I want you to know that just before the show, I gave each usher a case of bourbon. And during the performance, the ushers will pass out among you. <laughs> now, as Penny told you, I really have been inspecting the most interesting things in houses. Say, uh, Jack, you look as if somebody threw a bottle of leg makeup at your face. What happened? Well, I made an inspecting mistake, Ken. I transomed when I should have keyholed. <laughs> well, Jack, I, I thought you were done. <laughs> no? Jack, I thought you were going to the modern housing exhibit. Oh, I did, Ken, and I uh, went there in the modern way in my new car. I got a new uh, Kaiser Frazier car. It cost $4,000, but it has no brakes. Oh, Jack, if it has no brakes, how do you stop the car? Well, I stamp on the floorboard, then Mr. Kaiser and Mr. Frazier drag their feet. That slows it up. <laughs> then I uh, looked for the model house, but first I went to the wrong place. And a beautiful, gorgeous redhead screamed when she saw me peeking over a transom. Was I embarrassed? I thought I'd never get over it. Turn yeah. over. <laughs> well, tell me, Jack, at the exhibit, did you see any of the marvelous new machines? Oh, yes. They've made some miraculous progress. Take the automatic dishwashers. They're great. All you have to do is scrape off the dried eggs, soak up the gravy, rub off the strains, scrub your dishes in soapy water, rinse them and dry them, and the machine does all the rest. <laughs> Uh, the thing has interchangeable tubs. You put in a small tub and it grinds the dirt off your dishes. You put in the medium-sized tub and it beats the dirt out of your clothes. Well, uh, have, you, have you thought of putting in a great big tub? Oh, yes, Ken, but that's no way to treat a mother-in-law. <laughs> well, Jack, I'll bet you're against all kinds of progress, even in women's clothes. Now, how much progress could a guy make in women's clothes? Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I see. <laughs> Penny, it's shocking the way women dress. You know that only this afternoon I saw a girl wearing a paint dress? Oh, Jack, Jack, what's wrong with a simple, ordinary paint print dress? No, gee, you can say it right. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Nothing's wrong, but uh, this one was painted on her skin. Wasn't much of a joke anyway. <laughs> Well, look how the times are changing the kids. The little ones are tough. I've seen little kids playing tiddlywinks with manhole covers. They're so tough. And a bunch of kids down the street from me are always playing cops and robbers. Oh, Jack, there's nothing wrong with a nice, friendly game of cops and robbers. Yeah? With real cops? <laughs> and the worst kid of all is my landlord's little boy. Today I saw him playing skip the rope. Well, what's wrong with that? His daddy was hanging from the end of it. <laughs> Then uh, take the older kids. They're too healthy. They wear you out. I went to the Palladium with a couple of bobby socks the other night. Oh, brother. They said, come on, you wicky. Limp out. You're square. Yes, swing it. Swing it. After two of those dances, I can't even lift it. <laughs> All this they call progress. Everything changing. I guess one of the few things you can depend upon is the old folks. Say, Jack, does your grandmother still go for old granddad? Yes, yeah, she's still going around together. Yes, yeah, she's still going around together. <laughs> like a broken record. Give me the old-fashioned thing. Isn't there anything you like, Jack? How about the new airplane? Well, all I can say is that they're fast. I read about the new American Airlines plane that goes so fast, you can have breakfast in Berlin... Uh, lunch in London, dinner in New York, and bicarbonate in Los Angeles. Well, what good does it do? What good? Well, look, last week the plane went around the world. It took off from Los Angeles, flew over New York, London, and Shanghai, used 150,000 tons of gas. It cost over $100,000. Seven days later, they landed in Pomona. Pomona, think of it. All that trouble just to save driving through Pasadena. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, everything's changing. Everything is progress except nursery rhymes. You know nursery rhymes are over 200 years old? Kids have progressed today. They're modern. You tell a kid, take that rhyme, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. You tell a kid today that that's the reason that Jack and Jill went up the hill, they'll laugh right in your puss. <laughs> Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Now, that's an old-fashioned... That's very old-fashioned. We have a lot of modern rhymes in this country. Cole Porter, Irving Berlin, Hammerstein. Here's how Cole Porter might do Miss Muffet. When she began to sit down She didn't have any radar to guide her. She didn't spy that spider beside her. When she began to sit down, oh, she wasn't prepared to meet that spider's aggression. Little fool, use your discretion. And she sat right down on her tuffet. Excuse the expression. <laughs> she didn't say night and day. Now that is the way the kids would like Little Miss Muffet today. But whoever thought the day would come when you could buy a prefabricated house? Do you realize it only takes three hours to put up one of those houses? The only trouble is every three hours you have to put it up again. <laughs> and uh, 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 this really is an age of gadgets. In the old days when a woman wanted to go to bed, she put on a nightgown and went to sleep. The day before a woman gets into bed, she puts on hair curlers, wrinkle erasers, dimple depressors, ear flatteners, nose straighteners. Why, if a man wants to kiss his wife goodnight, he has to fight his way through $12 worth of hardware. <laughs> yes, we're living in an era of sophisticated Broadway shows. Now, maybe the kids would like to hear it this way. Boys and girls all know of Miss Muffet, but they read one line and they slough it. I'm referring now to her tuffet, and it's not... On top, she was oh so wise. She would climb a night to protect it against the weather. But the rain and snow, it beat it so that it looked like genuine leather. People very often would doubt it, and they'd ask her questions about it. Then one day they saw her without it. How their eyes did pop. So she bought another tuffet at the second-hand furniture shop. Yes, sir, that's probably the way the kids would appreciate it. You know, that tune is familiar to them. They hear it on the radio all the time. Radio, what's happened to radio? I was talking to a fellow not long ago that's been in radio for years and years. He told me he was in radio when L... Just when it was L.S., before it was M.F.T. He told me that he was in radio when the mystery chef didn't have a pot. You should hear this fellow talk about this. For <laughs> uh, the years that he's been in radio, I remember that uh, he was talking about when you give anyone tickets, you know, to go to see a radio in the old days, you give them a couple of tickets. They say, who's the star? Uh, what's the name of the band? Now it's, how much can I win? <laughs> All these shows, you know, they're all trying to top each other, giving things away. In the old days, they used to start with the small prizes. They used to give you a key ring, a pencil, stuff like that. Now each show tries, these quiz shows try to top each other. The other day, a guy was in one of those shows, he answered two simple questions, and he won the Grand Canyon. <laughs> oh, and then those commercials. I got something down here about commercials. You know those commercials? This program is brought to you each week 
by the makers of the new taste sensation, food. <laughs> Friends, have you tried food? It's not only good before meals and after meals, but during meals. <laughs> now that materials are available, available again, food is back on your grocery shelf. In convenient sizes, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. <laughs> if people drop in on you unexpectedly, you need never be embarrassed if you serve food. <laughs> Do as your doctor does. Eat food, and with millions of others, you'll be saying, I just can't live without it.